Let's go to page 353, yeah, let's do number 582. It says arrange the three members x, and you got y equal to x to the x, z equal to x to the x to the x, with 0 0.9 is less than x, less than 1.0 in order of increasing magnitude. Okay, so you got x, y, z, and you want to arrange it in the correct order. So, so first, let's go and compare the x and the y. And the best way to do it is put in a ratio. So you got x over y will equal to x to the 1, right? x is x to the 1. Now y is x to the x. Okay. And this will equal to x to the 1 minus x. Right? When you have division, you subtract. Right? Okay, so now uh, you want to see what this is equal to. Okay. So when x is less than 1, and 1 minus x, so therefore, if x is less than 1, so 1 minus x would be greater than 0, okay? Uh, so again, x is less than 1, so 1 minus x is greater than 0, so this would be positive. And so when, so therefore, x to the 1 minus x would be less than 1, okay? So again, when you have less than 1, so when you have the, the base is less than 1 and exponent is positive, so less than 1 to the positive exponent is going to be less than 1, okay? Again, you can try different numbers to, to see that this is true, okay? So this is going to be less than 1, okay? Therefore, so we're going to switch this over here. So you got x over y is less than 1. Okay, so again, from here we get this. From this we get that. And from this, from this over here, we, we, we get less than 1. So we just kind of, just kind of just skip the, the in-betweens. So we got x over y is less than 1. And you've cross multiply, so you get x is less than y. Okay, so that's important information. Okay, so we know that x is less than y. Now let's go and compare x and z. Okay, so again, we're going to use a ratio. So x over z equal to x over 1 over x to the x to the x. And so this is y, right? So this is equal to x1 over x to the y, okay? And therefore, this is equal to x to the 1 minus y. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing as over here. We're going to see what this is equal to, okay? So you got x is less than 1. And so x to the x is going to be less than 1, right? Again, when you have the base, when you have the base is less than 1 and the exponent is positive, you're going to get less than 1. And therefore, we got y is less than 1. And now y is less than 1, so 1 minus y, okay, 1 minus y is going to be greater than 0. Right, you just minus y on both sides. So if you minus y on both sides, so you're going to get 1 minus y is greater than 0. Okay, and therefore this is positive. So again, you're going to have an x to the 1 minus y, it's going to be less than 1. Because again, whenever, whenever the base is less than 1, so again, when, when base is less than 1 and exponent is greater than 0, it's positive, you're going to get less than 1. Okay, so again, we're going to get less than 1, just like before over there. Okay, so we got x over z, again, you're just going to drop the middle part, right? So you got x over z is less than 1. Again, you cross multiply. So you got x is less than z. Okay. Okay, so we know that x is the smallest number. Now we have to compare y and z. Okay. So this one I'm going to 
so I kind of do it the the try and error. So so that's so instead of compare you know put y over z, I'm gonna put z over y. Okay. So now we're gonna compare y and z. Okay. So this time I'm gonna put z over y. Okay. And this is gonna be equal to x to the x to the x over x to the x. And this is going to be equal to x to the, so again, you do the subtraction, right? So it'd be x to the x minus x. Okay. And this is going to be equal to x to the y minus x. Okay. Okay, well, we know that from here, so from here over here, we know that y is greater than x. So y minus x is going to be greater than zero. Okay. And so again, you're going to get the same situation. You got x is less than one. And so the base, so base is less than one, exponent is positive. So you're going to get x to the y minus x is going to be less than one. Okay, again, when base is less than one and exponent is positive, you're going to get less than one. So from here, you're going to get less than 1. Okay. okay, I can just get rid of the middle. So you got z over y is less than 1. So cross multiply, you got z is less than y. So from this three information, we can see that you can, the, the order would be x is less than z, less than y. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so you got a system equation and you try to get a maximum value of x squared plus y squared. So you got 2x squared plus 5xy plus 3y squared equal to 2. And you got 6x squared plus 8xy plus 4y squared equal to 3. Okay, so the approach to this is that we try to elimination method, and but this one instead of eliminate the variable, okay, because it's kind of messy, so we're going to eliminate the numbers so that it will equal to 0 so we can do factoring, okay? So again, we'll try to get rid of numbers so we can do the factoring. Okay, so we're going to multiply this by negative 3 and multiply by this by 2. Again, we try to eliminate the numbers instead of the variable. So you're going to get negative 6x squared minus 15xy minus 9y squared equal to negative 6. This one over here, I get 12x squared plus 16xy plus 8y squared equal to 6. And put this under here. Again, we try to eliminate the number to make it equal to 0 so we can do factoring. So you got negative 6x squared minus 15xy minus 9y squared equal to negative 6. So now when we add, we get 6x squared plus xy minus y squared equal to 0. Okay, so now we can go and do the factoring. Okay, so the master product would be 1, negative 6. So we need to get 3, comma, negative 2. Okay, so we're going to get, so x and 6x is not going to work, so you need to 2x and 3x. So this will be the inside, so you need to plus 1y, because that variable in the back, so you need to put variable in the back. And this will be the outside, so it will be minus y. Okay. So by setting this equal to 0, so you got two cases, okay? So you got 2x plus y equal to 0, or... 3x minus y equal to 0. Okay. So let's consider this one first. So move this over. So minus 2x minus 2x. So y equal to negative 2x. Okay. So I'm going to use, um, use this equation here. So again, I'm going to circle that. That's an important information. I'm going to substitute this into here. Okay, so I get 2x squared plus 5x, negative 2x, plus 3, times negative 
x square equal to 2. Go ahead and work everything out. I get 2x squared minus 10x squared plus 12x squared equal to 2. And so add everything together, I get 4x squared equal to 2. So x squared equal to 1 half. Okay. Okay, so again, that's the important information. Now, once I find x squared, I can come over here and, and get these. Okay, so y equal to negative 2x. Now, instead of solve for x, okay, since we're looking for x squared, y squared, right? So don't solve for x and y individually. Okay, so you can just go and square both sides. So y squared equal to 4x squared. So y squared equal to 4 times 1 half. Right, that's this one over here. So y squared equal to 2. Okay. Therefore, x squared plus y squared equal to 1 half plus 2. And this will equal to 5 over 2. Okay. So this is one answer. But is this the maximum? Well, we need to find out if this is the maximum, right? But let's just spark the answer for now. And we're going to do exactly the same thing on this side. Okay. So this one, if you move this over, so you got 3x equal to y. I'm going to move, switch it over so, so y is equal to 3x. So again, I'm going to use this equation down here. So you got 2x squared plus 5x times uh, 3x plus 3 times 3x squared equal to 2. So go and work out everything out. 2x squared plus 15x squared plus 27x squared equal to 2. Work this out. So you got 44x squared equal to 2. Divide by 44. So x squared equal to 1 over 22. Okay. And then again, you go and use this one here. So y equal to 3x. So you square both sides. So y squared equal to 9x squared. So y squared equal to 9 times 1 over 22. So y squared equal to 9 over 22. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 over 22 plus 9 over 22. And this is equal to 10 over 22 and equal to 5 over 11. Okay, so this is going to be less than that. This is more than that. So this is your maximum. So the maximum value for this system equation is 5 over 2. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, 584, the picture is giving. So let's go ahead and draw the picture. Okay, so you got A, B, C, D, and A, B equal to 10, so it's a rectangle, so this is 10, this would be a 10. B, C equal to 15, so this would be a 15. And a point P on the inside rectangle such that P, B, okay, so this is point P. So P, B equal to 12, P, C equal to 9. What's the length of the P, A? Okay, so that's your x over here. Okay, so for this one, what you need to do is realize that 9, 12, 15, this is a right triangle. Okay, that's a ratio of 3, 4, 5. So this is a right triangle. So when, by knowing that this is a right triangle, then you can go and make this into similar triangles. So you can draw these things down. And let's go and call this uh, uh, A, B, C, D, Okay, let's go and call this E and call this F. Okay. Okay. 
So now we can use a ratio because whenever you have right triangle, then when you draw a perpendicular line or parallel line to any side, all the triangle will be similar. So we're going to use a similar triangle. Okay, so for, for, so that's going to get this long side first. Okay, so EP so the long over hypotenuse. So long over hypotenuse will equal to long over the hypotenuse. Okay, so again, so this is the long, the long leg over hypotenuse equal to the long leg of the hypotenuse. And then from here, you go ahead and multiply by 9 on both sides. And you can go and simplify. You get 36 over 5. Okay, divide by 3. Divide by 3. Okay, so, so 36 over 5. So this is 36 over 5. Now, once you know that this is 36 over 5, then you can find this over here. Okay, so 10 minus 36 over 5 will give you 14 over 5. Okay, okay so again, FP equal to 10 minus 36 over 5. So FP equal to 14 over 5. Okay, so now we have to find this side, then we can use Pythagorean theorem. So again, we're going to do the same thing. Okay. So this is going to be short. So EC, so short over hypotenuse equal to short over hypotenuse. Okay. So again, we're going to use the short over hypotenuse equal to short over hypotenuse. Okay, so again, multiply by 9. So EC is equal to uh, cancel. So 27 over 5. Okay, so this is 27 over 5. Then we confirm B, BE. So BE will equal to 15 minus 27 over 5. So BE will equal to 48 over 5. Okay. So that's 48 over 5. So this is 48 over 5. Okay. Now let's go back things a little bit about the, uh, the triangle. So you have 9, 12, 15. If you don't recognize, you can try a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. Or you can do the factoring, right? Factor out of 3, so you get 3, 4, 5. So you can see that this is a 3, 4, 5 ratio spatial triangle. Okay. Okay, so now we got this part over here, right? Okay. So now let's go and do the, the Pythagorean theorem, right? So you can you use a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. You can do that, but... The, the, because the fraction make it a bit messy. So that's going to do the method over here. So you got 14 over 5. So the short, then you got the long, and you got the x. Okay. So find out the 1 fifth. So you got 14, 48, and just call, call this for y for now. And this one you can go and find out the 2. So you got 7, 24. Okay. Now you should recognize that this is 7, 20, 40 would be 25. 7, 24, 25. That's one of the spatial triangle. And then you go backward. So this will equal to 25 times 2 will give you 50. 50, divide, uh, 50 times 1 fifth. This will equal to 10. Okay. And therefore, the AP is equal to 10. Okay, from Pythagorean theorem. And that's it. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so we are giving four bags of coins. And we're going to call it W, X, Y, Z. And so in each bag there are coins, and they're they're going to be either one, two, or three ounces. So you're going to take one from the bag, from this bag. You take the three from this bag, take nine from this bag, and take twenty-seven from this bag. And the total weight will equal to um, ninety-five ounces. Okay, so determine the weight of coin from each of the four bags. 
Okay. So in this case, <coughs> um, so you take one from here, so it will be 1w plus 3x plus 9y plus 27z, this will equal to 95. So that's your formula. Then what you want to do is you can go and just make the table and do try and error. So w, x, y, z. So again, you get 1 from here, 3 from here, 9 from here, 27 from here. Okay. And this has to equal to a total of 95. Um, since this number is kind of high, so you want to get a lot of them from here. So let's say if this equal to 3. So if this equal to 3, this will give you 81. So, so this will give you, so 95 minus 81 give you 14. So 14, and if you get 2 of these, would be too much. If this equal to 2, the one, if this equal to 2, then it'd be 18 would be too much. So this has to be a 1. Okay. So again, so, so this will give you 81, this will give you 9, so now it's 90, right? Now, um, so now you got 5 to spare, so if you go 2, it's going to be too much. So again, you have to get 1 here, so it give you a 3. And by doing this, you know that this has to be a 2, right? So you have to get 2 of these, so you get 2, okay? And that's it. You got it right on the first try. So therefore, the... Um, the weight of these would be 2, 1, 1, 3. Okay. So this one, this, in, this one is 1 ounce, one, uh, 2 ounce, 1 ounce, 1 ounce, 3 ounce. Okay. Okay. So again, this would be a W, X, Y, Z. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. <coughs> Okay, 586, so the picture is giving. Okay, so this is A, B, C, D, E, uh, F, G. Okay, so all these are parallel and break into three regions. <coughs> and all of them have an equal area. So this have an area of an X, X, X. Okay, so let's go into the area ratio first. So area ratio, okay, so triangle C, D, E. To triangle CAB would be X to 3X. Right? Again, CD is X and CAB is 3X. So the ratio is 1 to 3. So scale factor would be because, because area is a two dimension, right? So to get a scale factor, you have to take the square root. So it'd be 1 to square root of 3. And you're going to do the same thing over here. And that's going to do the, the triangle CDE versus triangle CFG. Okay, so again, this would be X to 2X, right? X to 2X. So scale factor would be 1, uh, the area ratio would be 1 to 2. So scale factor would be 1 to square root of 2. Okay, so once we establish that, okay, so, so we can call that CD equal to 1, then FC will equal to square root of 2. Then FA, so this is 1, and this would be square root of 2. Okay. So, F, so FA so FA, this over here will equal to square root of 3 minus square root of 2. Okay, okay so now we can get our ratio now. Okay. So we're looking for CD over FA. 
So C D of F A will equal to one over square root of three minus square root of two. And then go ahead and simplify by multiply by conjugate. So that C D of F A will equal to um, so this will just equal to one, right? When you multiply, this give you three minus two, so you go to one. So you just have this over one, so it'd be square root of three plus square root of two, and that's it. Okay. okay, let's go to next one. Okay, 587. So how many solutions A, B, C are there to equation A squared plus B, C equal to B squared plus A, C? If A, B, C are integer between, so A, B, C are integers. And it's between 1 and 5 inclusive. That means it's 1 to 5. Okay, so these are, these are all the information we have. Okay, so first let's go and try to take care of this equation. Um, well, first let's go and make it equal to zero so we can do factoring. So I got a squared and minus b squared. Mm, all right, let me double check. Okay. And minus ac plus bc equal to zero. The okay, next things I'm going to do is I'm going to group. So I'm going to group a squared minus b squared and plus a, uh, negative ac minus, minus bc equal to zero. So again, be careful with this. Okay? Uh, wait, this is a plus. Okay. okay, then I'm going to go ahead and start to do factoring. So this one would be a plus b. A minus B. This one I, I'm going to factor the negative C. So I got A minus B. Okay, double check your sign. So this will give you negative, this will give you positive. Next step is going to factor the A minus B. So I got A plus B minus C equal to zero. So from here I got A minus B equal to zero or A plus B minus C equal to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this over here. <coughs> okay, so A minus B equal to zero, so if you plus B on both sides, so you got A is equal to B, and C can be anything, right? Okay, so if you make the table, A and B and C, okay? So remember, all of them have to be from one to five, right? So if A equal to one, then this has to equal to one, and C can be anything, so C can be one through five. Okay. And again, so if B equal to two, because A equal to B, so, so they are equal, so B had to be a two, so again, C can be one through five. And when A equal to three, B equal to three, again, C equal to one through five. And keep going. So when A equal to four, B equal to four, C equal to one through five. <clears throat> and when A equal to five, B equal to five, and C equal to one through five. <clears throat> So for me, I got five, 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 five. So there are a total of 25 solutions, okay, from this side. Okay, now let's go and do this part over here. Okay, so you got, I'm going to plus C on both sides. So I got A plus B equal to C. Okay. okay. So let's go and try all different ones. So let's start with a equal to one. So, so you can try this. Let's go and start with the lowest number. So one, one, c will equal to two, okay? But one, one, two is already accounted for over here. So don't count it again. Then you can have a one, two, and then c will equal to three. And so this one is good. Then you can have, um, so you got one, 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 two, and then Try one three, so one three four, so that's good. How about one four five? Okay, so this one is good. 
Okay. Now we cannot go one five because this is C way equal to six, right? It all have to be one through five, right? Okay, so we're done with A equal to one, so that's going to do two. So you can go two, one, three, so that one, that one is good. Then you try two, two, and this would be a four. Now two, two, four is over here, so this one is no good. Don't count that again. Okay. Then you can have two, three, five, so that one is good. Now you cannot go two, four, okay? Because it will give you six, right? Now let's try three. So three, one, four, so that one is good. Three, two, five, so that's good. Now you cannot go three, three, okay? Then you go four, one, five, so that one is good. Now you cannot go four, two. And you cannot go five, zero, there's no zero, right? So that's it, so that's count them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one have eight solutions. Okay. And so 25 plus A will give you 33. So there are a total of 33 solutions to this uh, equation. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so ABCD is a square. And point E and F are taken respectively on the side AB. So this is the E, E is on the AB, and F is on AD. And so AE equal to AF. So AE equal to AF. And again, it's a unit circle, uh, unit square, so every side is equal to one. And quadrilateral C D F E, so C D F E, so C D F E. So this quadrilateral has a maximum area. What is this maximum area? Okay. Okay. So first, let's go and get a formula for the the area of the of the quadrilateral. So K is going to be equal to the square one. Now that's that's going to call this X. Okay, and this would be 1 minus x. Okay, so the area would be 1 times 1. Okay, so that's the square. Now to minus this triangle. So minus 1 half base times height minus this triangle would be 1 half base times height. Okay, so again, area of the quadrilateral is equal to the square minus the triangle minus the triangle. So k is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 half x squared plus, um, uh, okay, let's go and multiply this out. So it'll be plus 1 half x minus 1 half. I kind of multiply this first because I already wrote the x uh, the positive already. Okay, so go ahead and arrange this a little bit. So k equal to negative 1 half x squared plus one half x and plus one half. Okay. Now if you if you take calculus you can to find the maximum minimum you can just take a derivative of that. Okay. Now if you don't know that what you do is uh, when from algebra, okay this is quadratic with a negative. So your your graph's gonna look like this. Okay? And to get them so you're gonna get a maximum. Maximum is gonna be a vertex. So vertex will give you the maximum. Okay? And the coordinate of this vertex, the 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 uh, is the h k, okay. So this h will equal to negative b, um, negative. It's going to be equal to negative b over two a. This is from your quadratic formula. Remember, when you complete a square, you're going to get x equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b square minus four a c over two a, right? And the maximum when this equal to zero, when this equal to zero, you get negative b over two a, okay. So anyway, so 
the the x the maximum will give you a, a negative b over 2a okay so x equal to negative b over 2a so x equal to negative b is 1 half over 2a so x equal to okay so this will give you so negative will cancel out and this will be one so b just one half Okay, so once x equal to 1 half, then you can substitute into here to get the area. So k equal to negative 1 over 2 times 1 half square plus 1 half times 1 half plus 1 half. So k equal to, um, so this would be, so it'd be negative 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 2. And if you make into common denominator of 8, so it would be negative 1 plus 2 plus 4. So k will equal to 5 over 8.